Welcome back class. Uh, today we're going to begin with our values um, rather than like in our last class we started off with two values and we took all of our values that were there and we grouped them into a grouping of two. Now in this handout which I gave you last Tuesday um, uh, all of you should have it if uh, pull it out so that you can look at it you'll see it a little better than you're seeing here in this uh, uh, video. Um, remember back when I was talking about this, we're going to start our drawing off with three values. And there's a value scale up there and it's showing the three values you're going to use. Uh, your darkest at the beginning isn't going to be black, even though it's going to represent something black, like the shoe that I have sitting here. So we're going to come up with a dark gray. Now I put that up here, so I've got a dark gray. Um, and you're going to do the same on yours, on your piece of paper, once you get your objects drawn out in a frame of reference, is what you're going to do is put three squares. It doesn't have to be this big, but I have to be able to see them. There's a dark gray. Above it, I put a black. You might be able to see a little bit of the difference in this video, but as all I'm showing is how much darker my black is from the dark gray. And it wants to be at least the value difference uh, or value and a half difference, depending. So when I look at the shoe, some of you might be able to see it. The difference between this part of the shoe and the inside of the shoe. So even though we know the whole shoe is black, the darkest areas are going to be black, which makes your lightest areas or not our lightest, not the highlight, but the average is going to be a dark gray. So the idea with this, as we talked about, we're going to start off anything that's black with a dark gray. So there's my dark gray. Now the dark gray has to be different than the middle tone. Now this paper I've been working on through the whole semester, so it's getting darker and darker. But my middle tone needed to be darker than this paper. And so these two have to work together. In other words, it's got to be a dark, a middle, and my average light, not the lightest. This average light is close. I put a pure white, and I use some white Conti crayon just to show a pure white so I can see the differences between the two. <clears throat> and the drawing that I've got behind here, this value is close to this value. So um, this average light might work. I'm going to see how it goes as I develop it. But anyways, you need a dark and not a black to represent your black. You need a white and off white as this handout is going to say to represent your lights. And we're coming up with a midtone. We're going to lay out everything in the drawing with those three values. Then in the very end, I'm going to come back into my shoe and I'm going to add black where the shadows are, where the darkest areas are. And in my light, I'm going to go back and add some highlights so the white will show up over my light. So in the end, really, there's five values, but the whole drawing begins with three. In the handout I gave you, it does talk about that. And it, and it shows you a little illustration of the still life, okay? So, is what your first thing is going to be is you're going to have to come up with a still life. The still life that I have here <clears throat> has three different valued objects. And you got to do the same. So, and all of you did set up a still life already with three different values. And in it, we reduced the lights of our mid-tone in that case. Now I got a mid-tone background, so this is different than it was before. But anything that was a mid-tone in the past, we made it a white. So this would be light, this would be light, this would be light. And anything that was in shadow, we made it a black. But now we've got the luxury of making our shadows on white a middle tone. Okay. Now this middle tone of the shadow on the side of this mask that I have sitting here this middle tone, because I only have three values to work with, and if this is known as value grouping, so this middle tone and this middle tone are going to be the same middle tone as my background. They might be a little different, or the color might be different, of course. However, since you're only dealing with three values, this is a middle tone, this is a middle tone. This is a middle tone, my average light. So at the beginning, when I make my background a middle tone, if I make him a middle tone, he disappears. But I'm going to then, for my darks, on my middle tones, I'm going to use a dark gray. So the dark gray I talked about will become a shadow now on my middle tone. 
so that when I do put this background in, <clears throat> in the drawing, which I'm going to do first, then I'm going to go after the middle tone of this guy's body, but immediately I'm going to go for my dark gray so that you can see something stand out. He's going to tie together with the background until eventually I might put on a little bit of a highlight as a my darker light. Now, I'd never use a pure white, but an off-white, as you'll see. So he'll be suggested, but he will not be outlined, right? And of course, my shoe, as I already mentioned, is going to be a dark gray, <clears throat> like the shadows on the material when you set yours up. <clears throat> if you have a middle tone background, that's great. Use an old shirt, use whatever. If you can put some folds in it, then it breaks it up to some dark gray folds, like in the handout that you have in front of you, okay? So with that in mind, is what's going to happen here. <clears throat> I already drew this out to save some time. So here's my objects. I'm seeing them as I drew them from this angle. They're a little different from your angle. So if you're wondering what's up with that, that's what's up. So here's my little object here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for this middle tone. And I'm going to block this out. Now, a couple of things that I'm going to use to work with this drawing is, I'm going to point it out here in a second, is <clears throat> I'm going to use one of these blending stumps, okay? Um, and all of you, I uh, had it on the list. If you pick them up, they're nice to have. So in this, I could go with his neck, you know, because this is all vine charcoal. If I'm trying to lift it and I say his neck is going to be a mid-tone, but I, I want to be able to see it, you know, so I'm going to try to get a little bit of line in there temporarily before I begin to add darks, right? So I'm going around and I've got to get this background a mid-tone. And I'm going to take my mid-tone... And you're going to need to, my material that everything on is light. So I'm going to step over here just for a second because I have to get the edge of his face. This mask that's here. And it's hard to see on the other side of my arm. So hopefully I get the edge close. So I've got to get this right up to the edge because the mask is light. This is a mid-tone. That's what takes the time, of course, trying to get your edges accurate. And of course, with me doing it backwards, I have a hard time seeing one side from the other. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to rub it in. I'm going to take this side. Now I've got some lines drawn back here that you can hardly see because these areas in here are shadows uh, from where I'm standing on the, on the green material. So it's what's going to happen is those are going to become darker. Um, so I'm going to just take the time and get most of this blocked out before I do anything with that little sculpture. In here, um, I'm going to come around. So take your big areas first. It's a better way to do it. And block them out. So as I go around that bird a little bit darker like that, he'll start to come out a little bit, but it's what I'm going to do in a moment. I'm going to be going back into him and going very dark. So I'm going to be working my darks with my mid-tone so that you can see him stand out a little bit. Otherwise, he'll all tie together, as you know. So again, I'm trying to get these edges Try to get the edges, even though this edge eventually is going to disappear. But I want to maintain it right now, just so that I know what it's doing. OK. 
Perfect. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my dark gray. So I'm trying to get this value close to this value. Okay. Now I'm going to take my dark gray and I'm going to run it along this side of the bird. Okay. So on this side for me, he's shadow. Now I'm going to put this in lightly and then rub it so that it's not I got to kind of look at the shapes the best I can and watch how far the shadow goes. All reflective lights are going to be gone. So this dark is going to come right up to his wing, like right in through here. I'm going to run on mine. I'm putting a little vine charcoal over it just because this on the wall. And I'm going to rub this in a little bit so it becomes a little more even. This whole area, I don't know if you can see it, but this is technically all in shadow. These are reflective lights. If I was to put my hand here, they would disappear. So uh, all the reflective lights are going to go away. So I'm going to rub this a little bit and bring that up to its edge and watch as much as I can the shapes that I'm seeing. Because this is the only side of this thing that's going to separate at the moment. So. so that's pretty close in value, I think. Let me get it a little darker. So that value is pretty close to this one without being pitch black. I can't have this pitch black because it's, it's on a mid-tone. So this becomes a dark gray. Okay, So this is a dark gray. My mid-tone in the light will be the mid-tone of my mid-tone I have up there on the board, which is the mid-tone I already put in the background, unless there's a highlight that we would eventually get to. Now these edges on yours, you'd want to take your time, and these edges would all want to be nice. I'm, for the sake of time, I'm kind of moving them along kind of quickly. Uh, but you'd have to really watch your edges. So this wants to be even. And the shadow on his neck, I could spend a little bit more time with. Make it a little bit wider, of course, here. I'm going to do that so hopefully it shows up better in the image. This coming around the wing would come in here like this. Uh, leaving a little of the mid-tone in between these two shapes, which I'll put in in a minute. So I'm trying to establish the shadow so he doesn't totally disappear. On this side of the leg, it becomes dark. The other side of the leg is a mid-tone, so that's going to disappear on the other side in a minute. So I'm working the one with the least contrast first. And again, all of your edges, very important. So this is this leg isn't reading real well up against there because I don't have the edge established. So I'm going to rub that. I don't want it black in the end. doesn't want to be black. So I'm going to go back to my middle. I'm going to do one thing here with his beak because on his beak there's a strong light. But um, I am going to use the needed eraser and just kind of erase out temporarily a light right there. And that I'm going to preserve. I am going to try to get a middle tone in between it. Um, if it's at all possible on this paper. There, there would be a middle tone in between there, but I'm not going to get it on here. It's too small. Okay. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is take this side of him and I'm going to tie it together. So these are, so you'll hardly even see it, okay? This mid-tone stand that he's on would link together to the shape behind it, okay? So this mid-tone and this mid-tone would have to tie together. So I'm just going to put down a shape. The only thing that's separating it is going to be the white background uh, or the white material on the ground there. But again, these edges, make them neat, make them neat. Take your time with them. This will now blend together. So now he's almost in place, probably the best I can get it on this piece of paper. Um, You'll have a much easier time on the charcoal paper, of course. I can, so he's now disappearing all but for the dark shape that I put in to separate them. And that's what it should be. And these shapes, there are some small shapes on his head, but I'm not going to get them just yet. There's little things that would describe them with a little bit of the middle tone coming together. Uh, with a little bit of the shadow on the other side, but it's going to be hard to pull off on this piece of paper. So I'm going to leave him like this. Now, where I'm going to move to now is I'm going to take the light on the table around him, and I'm going to try to come up with an even off-white. Um, so I'm going to try to clean this up just a little if possible, but from the paper underneath and all of this drawings underneath. It's not the easiest to pull off, but so I'm going to try to get this as clean as I can. Okay. This edge to the background, I want to establish it a little better than this edge. Okay. So what I'm going to do is move on to the mid-tone. So this mid-tone I put on there I'm now going to use on the side of the mask. So that's going to come around, as you can see, on the face of the mask. It's going to adjoin to the corner of the mouth. It comes into the upper lip, connects the side of the nose. It's going to be underneath the orbital area, and it's going to get into the eye which eventually becomes a black in there. But I'm going to put that, and then there's a shadow in here of a mid-tone, and of course, a darker value within the eye here. Okay. And so my mid-tone, if, if I look at it carefully, <clears throat> it's going to come under the edge of the lower lip. I'm going to create a pattern and connecting under the chin. So I'm going to link all of that together, okay? So these are patterns, and they're all going to just go together. The side of the mask, it's going to be in here. Okay. Soft edges, watch your soft edges. The light on his eye going to lift a very little bit just to keep where uh, uh, again the suggestion you can go after details as long as they fit within the sim simplified value pattern that you're using okay so is what I'm going to do with the material in the background I want to go for that before I finish up the shoe and is what I'm going to put in is where the folds are. So is what's going to happen is this becomes a mid-tone here. This is going to connect. Next to it is a shadow in here. And this shadow has a sharper edge here. Where I'm, Well, you see it light there. I see it as shadow. So it'll be a little different than you see it. As it goes this way to my mid-tone background, it will have a soft edge here up against the mask. This shadow is going to come up. 
I'm watching where the sharp edge is and then where the soft edge is. Soft edge is on this side. So I'm gonna keep my sharp edge real bold and I'm gonna gradate it to the other side. Place it all the way down to the shoe. Soft edge. That's my first dark fold. In here becomes middle tone. This fold will go up more. I'm going to bring it all the way up to the top. So I'm using the compressed charcoal. A little bit dark, so I'm going to rub it down. And now we're going to come after another fold here. Here it's got a soft edge on the inside. Here you might be able to see it there. It becomes a sharper edge. Place in the sharp edge. For me, it goes all the way down. I'm going to rub in the mid-tone next to it. So I'm doing both of them together. I'll go after the shoe in a moment. Again, the vine charcoal powders off a lot. So I'm mixing the compressed with the vine charcoal, but I'm watching the edges. So as you can see, I'm trying to keep it sharp to soft. So this feels a little more like a curve. This would feel more like a curve. There's another dark in here, which I might place in. This has a very soft edge. I'm going to run it up. Okay, and then this is a mid-tone. My sharp edge. You want to put a background in this. Um, don't leave it all white. Uh, the values of a background help explain and connect things to our foreground, okay? So it takes a moment to get it, of course, but um, yours definitely can be spending more time than I'm doing. I'm kind of rushing along to show you some ideas of how to work with this stuff. There's another nice dark in here that I do want to get. This is the dark gray uh, moving into This would be a very sharp edge, and this would be a soft edge. So, eventually, I could use some highlights on this. If I have the moment, I'm going to show you how to do that. Along the edge of the mask, up against here. There's a slightly darker shadow. I'm going to place it in. Again, keep it a dark gray. All these should be a dark gray. Anyways, you want to get that background a good mid-tone so that the lights stand out. Okay, so now is what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the shoe second here. Just trying to make these things a little more even. So with the shoe, for the most part, it's a dark gray. So because it's black, I put planes on the shoe. This angle is the toe, it turns. There's those lines of separation that are going to go away now. I am going to maintain this dark just so that you can see it. Uh, otherwise, this would fall together with this um, this is my mid-tone, so I've got to keep a difference between my mid-tone and my dark gray before I go black. So I'm going to first block this out, go a little darker and make it a mid-tone. I'm sorry, make it a dark gray. So this is my dark gray. My dark gray is this, so if there should be a difference between those two, which there is, which is good. 
and lighten that up a little bit. So I'm going to put the first layer on this with the vine charcoal. Get on this side just for a moment. I'll be out of your way here. So I try to get these shapes a little more even. So everything should start to be blending together. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go after a dark gray. So I'm going to connect or layer. Again, now I'm using with the charcoal over, try not to use, I'm using the compressed charcoal on top. I'm keeping that little opening just because of the nature of this paper I'm working on. Um, I'm keeping it nothing there yet. I just want to get my dark gray in place and So this dark gray and this is a dark gray. So there goes my edge. I'm going to purposely link them together because this falls into a, a dark gray shadow. There are places that it's then will still be noticeable. dark gray in place. I'm going to rub it real good. I'm going to get the uh, strap of the shoe in place as a dark gray. These shapes really take your time with. Really watch them like, see now I've got to make sure this strap is a dark gray, not a black. And then it should stand out against the middle tone of the mask face. So, so now this value, they might be close. Nonetheless, they're different. And you want to keep those things always in mind. There's a back part to it here. I'm going to try to get. Sometimes it gets to be a little challenging because the edge can get lost in there. So sometimes you have to just go back and redraw. Anyways, I want to get that shape up against there so you can see a little bit of the difference of the value. I'll try to make this a touch lighter, but maybe it won't go a touch lighter. There we go. Find a finger that doesn't not loaded with charcoal. So so much is going to be the edges, and this dark gray technically would link together with this. So wherever those things link, this is a, a, a just a lighter, my mid overall mid-tone. So there's where it would separate. This would separate there, but it would connect here. So you have to kind of go through and watch those connections. It's a little bit shabby, but I'm going to leave it like that. Now, the next step of this would be is you could, once it's all laid out with your three values, I'm, I would then, the light, that's the best I'm going to get with it on this paper I'm working with. I'm going to say this value of light that I have, let's see. This value of light that I have, I'm going to say is this value. If I can make it a little, a little even, I'm going to try it this moment and connect anything that's soft together. Okay. Um, I just like the lower lip to underneath. 
So now is what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the darker areas, black. So now I'm going to take this black and separate. This would have all been dark gray for you guys. And now we're going to go back over it and I'm going to watch separations. So as I go with a dark, now as I go with a black, And so what I'm going to do is with that black, I'm going to take where there's slight highlights and go just a little bit lighter than the dark gray, a little bit lighter. I'm going to watch where the sole meets. You see, I, this is a dark gray, so now I can go back where the sole meets the shoe. And this is going to be the side of it. So now watch edges. Like, so I just put a very dark line in, it's a little darker than the dark gray, and I'm going to gradate this value up into my dark gray a little bit, because this is the side of the shoe, and I'll rub it a little bit so you can see it. So it's got a very sharp edge where the sole meets, and then it should blend up into, because this is the side of the shoe, it should blend up that way. So then it's going into your dark gray. So the dark gray is here. Okay. So underneath, or where the sole is, uh, the thickness of the sole is here. It's got a little bit of a dark shape there, a little dark edge. So I'm going to place that in. So this, these darks now will start to bring out the dark gray so it looks a little lighter. But they're very close in value because it's a black shoe. Here, within the shoe, it becomes darker, darker than the dark gray. So I'm going to go with and place a little bit of the black in there and shape it a little bit. So place that in, and it will start to shape itself pretty easily. You'll start to see it form come out, um, especially if I could get a very little bit of a as you can see on the plane break, you should all know what plane breaks are. The plane break here where the top of the shoe meets the side, you get a very little highlight, but the highlight cannot be real light. I could lighten it up a little bit like that. So then you'll have a dark, a black, a dark gray, a highlight. It goes back to your dark gray again, okay, As the which will make the shoe turn. Okay, so I'll get that back to a decent dark gray, not a mid-tone. So, trying to get them. Okay, so now it's a decent dark gray again. So that's a dark gray, that's a black. So now we're starting to get some form out of the shoe just with those few values. This little strap, there's an inside part, and it separates there as it makes its curve like this. And in there, it gets real dark at that separation point, like right there. So as I separate that with the black, and that's why we never go black at the beginning, that becomes a little separate, okay? And it begins to separate from the piece underneath. So I'm going to take the opening of the shoe where you put your foot in, and I'm going to get it as black as I can, of course. So this is going to come in the way that I see it. It wraps around this way. I'm going to just redraw it now with my black line. The thickness of this strap is here. And it does that. In this, I'm just going to use a dark line and describe how it touches then the edge of the shoe. And then this, it turns in a little bit as it meets the shoe. So again, I'm going to add those darks. So you're kind of modeling it a little bit as that, sh that band begins to turn, that strap. The opening of the shoe that I see gets pretty dark right there. And for me, this back corner, the opening of where your foot would go in, takes on a dark edge. And it does that. It's very thin. I don't see much of it. And so you place that in. The edge, because of the turn of the 
material there picks up a little bit of a light. So you can use a little bit, but it can't be too light. It's just going to be a little. I'm going to place it along that edge. So the back of the heel, you might not see it, but as it turns, it gets pretty dark. And so like the back of the shoe, for me, gets blacker. So this is where the back of the shoe is going to separate from now my dark gray background. So that's a dark gray background. Now I have to rediscover the edge and look for the dark shape that I'm seeing. And everything's done with shapes. And then the thickness of the heel as it makes its turn is right here. So now I have to rediscover that edge. This has an incredibly soft connection from the back of the shoe. Very, 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 very soft. So that's how you want to perceive it. Underneath here, it gets pretty dark as well, as it's a kind of a concave area on the heel of the shoe. And these connect, and then it goes back to the dark gray. Um, again, the shoe being the dark gray. Uh, keeping that in mind. Um, and then there's a separation here. So I'm going to make it a little clearer, a little stronger. And then underneath, there's a slight, I see reflective light, but I'm just seeing it as a slightly lighter shape. And you can add these, you know, so you get that little bit of that reflection in there sandwiched in. It's good that you guys, you begin to start to think about that. In the mask, I'm going to leave that alone. In the mask, the eye gets very dark. So I'm going to kind of go with a dark. Um, I'm going to watch. This one as well. So I'm going to place those darks sharp up against the nose. And then there, there is a highlight on that um, eye. So what I'm going to do is lift up, take your kneaded eraser and shape it so you get a, the shape that you're looking for. So I'm going to watch where that light is. So I'm going to place a light in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, for this paper, you'll be able to erase on yours, but for the light on the white, I'm going to take a white piece of Connie crayon. And if I watch, for you, it might be a little different, but this light above connects to this light on the eye, connects, and I see all those little lights on there. Um, so is what happens is above the brow, there's a light, there's a highlight right there, and it connects to another highlight right there. Uh, there's a little light on the rim like that. Um, underneath the eye, or like right on the sparkle of the eye, there's a little light right there underneath and then underneath and watch sometimes you can watch these edges you know whoops um, I'm trying to get that softer so that is a soft edge is a little light for me right next to the nose and these are the little highlights because that's a highly reflective um, surface so it's going to pick up all those little bits of light right and so that's in there um, the mask has a design to it and is what's on there is oh let's say this is our light so I'm going to tone this down just a little bit not much turning it into a little more of a mid-tone to make that separation and I've got a mid-tone here on the side and then there's the black stripes but remember, with black, you do want to imagine, let me see, I've, I got to find my division line of where that is now, because uh, I eliminated it. So now I'm going to just take these stripes and do it with the vine charcoal. 
and it would fade in, fade out, or fade into my fold. For me, there's a fold here. Um, and then there's another one here, so I'm just going to suggest Adam. And then I get another one here. And there's a fold there, so it stopped. Up here, I'm just going to put the, if you've got anything that has a little bit of a pattern to it, it's kind of nice uh, to, to use those, place it in, because you get these now slightly darker gray stripes in the midst of the mid-tone that's there. So it'll start to give it a little bit more depth. Okay. On this, I don't know what it is, but on the, uh, by your ear, there's a couple of little, by the fold there, I see. Okay. Um, so anyways, just placing those in. So we, we're just going a little lighter for our highlights um, along the ridge of the nose for me right here. There's a light. Um, it shows the plane break right there. It's got a slightly soft edge, so I'm going to keep it soft. And it ends right about here. And there's a little bit of light on the lower lip. All these kind of line up. And I don't get much light here, but I'm going to use very little. Okay. So mostly my lights are like that. Um, a couple of things, and then I'm going to leave this. Underneath, there's a shadow. There's a shadow on our white material. The shadow on the white material has to be a middle gray. Okay. So I'm going to take time to place that, forgot about that. So shadows on white are a light, are, are our mid-tone value. But that's nice, it adds another value to it. Makes that less harsh in between there. Um, so mostly I just get that one. There is one back here that I might put in. It's a mid-tone, so it would connect to that shape. Okay, they would just all connect together. And on the material is what I'm going to do is add a little bit of light. So the material is white. So is what I would do where, where the light strongly hits it, like here, like here, I would add the white to it. Or for you, you're going to erase it out, um, you know, or just leave the white of your paper. But I'm going to go a little lighter to bring it out. And there's a few areas that would be nice to have it here to bring out the clarity of this edge. Now my, my cloth that I have everything sitting on has a little pattern to it. I don't want that. Um, I'm just looking at as if it was a pure white. As I go a little bit lighter there, I can get a little more clarity from this coming forward. Okay. And um, last little thing that we will do is on the sculpture of the bird, is what I want to do is go a little bit lighter uh, for the lights. So maybe the chamois will work. So as you can see on his wing, there's a little light. So I can't go anywhere near as light as this, but I can use a, uh, a dark light. My original light can be placed. So you watch an edge. So I'd have to try to watch that edge right there. And I could connect sharply that light. And then that light is broken as it moves through like this. And it comes more through the center. A little bit of light like that. So if I keep it in the center, it turns to form. And even though these things all connect together, that separates it. So it has a neat look. So this all melts together, all melts together. And then you get a little bit of a light. But be careful where those lights are. I'm keeping the middle tone in between. I didn't hit that one perfectly because this is real thick. But uh, if you be careful with them and you watch where they are, they can really add to the... Um, to the look of it in the end result, right? Um, so there's a little light in there, and ultimately there would be a little bit of light on his feet. Like I'm gonna probably have to use the eraser to get that sharp enough. So there'd be a little light on there, so you could put, you know, the little bit of light that's on his feet. You probably won't even see this because it's so subtle. But anyways, 
uh, it would it would show a little bit of those angles. So I'm going to leave this at this at this place um, with yours. I want you to really take your time with edges. I couple of things I did get to is the light, a little bit of the light on the folds. Like if I go a little lighter, this is a mid-tone. So if I go a little lighter, the lightest I can get it is this. It can never get to this light or it would totally ruin the illusion. There'd be a little light on this fold. And if I put those lights in, then you're going to see a light, a middle, a shadow, and it starts to take on even more depth. Um, there would be a little bit of light in the background here, but not much. So with those few values, you can, five values, you can model about anything. Uh, but with yours is what I'm really stressing is these first three values. As you can, as you notice with the white, it's sparse. As you notice with the black, it's not much. The black's only going in the dark shoe. There is no black on this. There is no black on the white other than the eyes because they were black. So I will see you in the next video.